I can study you. Here we go. Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today is day seven of the plant-based bundle. It will end at 11.59 p.m. on Monday, the 27th of November, and we have one of the most talented chefs I've ever met. She's in the bundle. She has a brand new book called, it's actually a course, A Taste of Indonesia, and she's going to be making some Indonesian food. I don't think we've had that on the show. She actually lives in Malaysia, so it's already tomorrow. It's eight o'clock in the morning, Saturday, where she is. I'm winding down my day. She's starting her day, and she's going to be making something that I've never heard of, but it's got carrot in the title. Please welcome back Raw Chef Yin. How are you doing? Hi, Jeff AJ. I'm good. Thanks for having me on the show. It's good to be back. Yeah, I it's always some people, fun. I, yeah, I, I actually had some people writing to me, asking me, like, are you going to be on Chef AJ's show for the bundle? So um, That's so yeah. good. So glad you are then. That's <laughs> great. Yeah, you're so talented and you're so creative. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. I think um, I just want to, because... Because I live in Asia and in Southeast Asia and, and the food and the flavors here are so robust and so um so different from, from other places. I always want to, you know, share this with the world. So um what I do is I take the raw food techniques that I've learned, you know, the food processing, the spiralizing, dehydration, and then apply it to the Asian food here instead and um yeah, and come up with the recipes. Nice. So I can't wait to see what you're gonna make. Okay, so so um in the bundle like you mentioned, I have um my course, A Taste of Indonesia. And um I put in because I have traveled to Indonesia many times when I used to work in the corporate world. Um uh Jakarta was one of my um one of the markets that I covered so I would travel there so I ate a lot of Indonesian food um I've also been to Bali I presented at the Bali vegan festival so um um so yeah I've also eaten a lot of food there as well so um I wanted to yeah I wanted to introduce these flavors and um you know in a raw vegan way so uh just very quickly I have the nasi goreng um this is the Indonesian fried rice I think a lot of people would know about it because I think nasi goreng, I always see it like in international menus when they talk about Indonesia. And then I have the ketchup manis, which is a Indonesian sweet soy sauce. And that one is, I think the secret to, you know, what, why a lot of Indonesian food tastes so good because there's so much umami in it. And then um, there's also a um, acha katimun, which is a cucumber pickle because usually people eat that with the rendang. And the rendang is actually a, um, it's a, I think they call it like a caramelized curry. So you may have a curry, but then after that, they cook it down even longer so that the um, flavors become really intense. And also it was, Initially, because they wanted to preserve the meat, you know, um, they usually use beef and then they wanted to preserve that meat so that it can, um, you know, you can travel and you just can keep it for a long time. And then um, I also have the Mi Goreng Indonesia, which is a Indonesian fried noodles. And then there's also a um, a recipe on the green chili paste, sambal ijo. Yeah. And um, gado gado, which is a salad, which is a blanched vegetable salad. And then I also have a drink in there, which is by a health tonic um i took a this was this a jamu i took a jamu workshop when i was in bali to learn how to make this and then i decided to make a raw vegan version about that so um to this recipe it's um a rendang yeah and um this time so usually they use beef uh although i know they also yeah it's usually beef but um Today I'm using carrots because um and I was just telling Lisa I was inspired by her because she uses carrots in her um taco uh as taco meat. Yeah, mm -hmm. in her yeah. because she has a raw vegan tacos ebook there. And I actually made it as well. So this is this is her low fat carrot crumbles. And I was like, oh, maybe we can do something uh for my Asian food instead. And so the other day I tried this recipe. I tried out this recipe because I was I needed to travel. 
and uh, for a music symposium and they said they might not be the hotel might not be able to provide us vegan food so um, I made that dehydrated that um, we did have some in the end the hotel did manage to give us some vegan food but I brought that along as well and I met another vegan filmmaker and I gave let her have some and she loved it and she started sharing it with everyone as well and everybody liked it so I thought like oh okay this is great I can show you guys um how to make it today yeah so um should I get started can I get started yes please I'm excited to learn okay all right so this is a raw vegan recipe the uh, raw food techniques we're going to be using is food processing as well as um, dehydrating. The main ingredients, so to replace the meat, I'm using carrots. So it's four carrots. And then um, I'm also going to be using some button mushrooms. Uh, is it button? Yeah, button mushrooms and then, um, and then sprouts. So I have mung bean sprouts and uh, green, these are brown, no, brown lentil sprouts. Yeah, so that's kind of like the meaty, uh, meaty part of it. And then you have your aromatics as well. So I have the lemongrass. I don't know whether people, uh, do you, I don't, I, I don't know how no, often people actually, use lemongrass. We had a show on Monday with Dr. Pai and he talked about lemongrass. He does uh, about ah. spices. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So I have lemongrass. I'll just show you guys how I cut it as well, just in case those who, um, you know, haven't used this before. Um, let me see. Oh, and then the aromatics. I'm not using okay. Traditionally, the recipe uses shallots, but I find it very hard to peel shallots, so I'm just using leek, and I think that works well. But if you want to use shallots, you can as well. And then, um, it's kind of a lot of ingredients. And then, uh, so we had the lemongrass, we need the chili to put some heat. Um, I'm just using this red chili, yeah. Um, in Malaysia, we just call it red chili, although I think in um, US, I've had people asking me, like, do I use Fresno? Do I use Spurs? I think, um, yeah, you can use any of the chili peppers, actually, and also just use as much depending on your spice level. And then um, I also have this thing called the turmeric leaf. I don't know whether you guys use This is what gives the uh, rendang its very, very unique flavor so this is a turmeric leaf yeah so I have never gonna... seen, I, i've never seen a turmeric leaf yeah it smells so good i i don't I think, oh you know what i think they sell it frozen in the asian market yeah you can get it frozen yeah so what you do is usually we we leave out the spine and then i just like you know cut it yeah really small because we're gonna just process everything anyway and then um for the Indonesian food, they use a lot of spices because they are basically a spice hub. And um, yeah, the origins, they've been, you know, like cloves and um, cumin and um, yeah, nutmeg and all that. So um, I've used many powders because we are doing this raw. But um, traditional recipes, if it's turmeric, they actually use the turmeric root, you know. If it's coriander, they actually use the coriander seeds. But anyway, I'm just using the powder. So um, what I have is, let me see. I have, let me show you. I have dried, I'm using dried chili flakes. Okay. Um, I, I know in the recipe, I said coriander seeds. But today, I just decided to use coriander powder because then it grinds up better. So there's coriander powder. Um, there's black pepper. This is the Malaysian Sarau black pepper. Um, putting in some onion powder. Like I said, we are really using some leeks. Um, but some recipes they actually you want layers of flavor, so you use onion powder and then you use leeks as well. And then um, I have my curry powder. Oh, this is my favorite curry powder brand. It says meat, but it's actually there's no meat in it. If you guys can get this Baba meat curry powder, this um is really flavorsome. I'll tell you what's inside. Ooh, I can't read. Um, coriander, chili, fennel, cumin, turmeric, white pepper, black pepper, cinnamon, cardamom, star anise, bay leaf, clove, nutmeg, dal, and rice. Yeah, so that's my favorite. Um, I think they're selling this on Amazon. So yeah, you guys can try that. And then um, we have some cumin powder as well, um, some turmeric powder. 
And then what's interesting is to add to the umaminess. Um, I'm I'm using uh baobab powder just to add in some superfood as well. If you cut, if you don't have baobab powder, you can always use tomato powder as well. Yeah, and then usually they use um ginger root, but today I'm lazy, so I'm just going to use my ginger juice, especially since um my beauty and Doku sent this to me. This Malaysian ginger, and then for the saltiness. Um, I'm using three different kinds of, um, yeah, salt-ish things. Um, that's just like I said, I just want to layer the flavors because rendang is traditionally known as a very, very flavorsome dish. So I wanted to make it as authentic as possible. So I'm using, um, my organic soy sauce, which is high quality, um, you know, small batch brew soy sauce. But if you are allergic, you can always use, you know, your, uh, coconut aminos your liquid aminos. Um, I'm also going to use some miso as well. I'm using the white miso paste, yeah. Just make sure your miso is vegan because some misos, check the labels because some misos has, have, uh, it's bonito flakes which is fish in it. Um, and then I'm also using shiokoji. You don't need to use shiokoji. You can just use, you know, some miso or you can use some salt or some coconut aminos. But like I said, I'm just trying to layer the flavors. Um, I know this is a lot of ingredients, but it's worth it. So this shio koji is basically a Japanese seasoning. Um, and this is also, um, this one is a all, let me see, it's handcrafted. It's, it's brewed by a fermentation house here in Malaysia. So there is, you know, 100% natural ingredients. There's koji, organic Japanese rice, Celtic sea salt, and filtered water. Yeah. And then for the sweetness, um, I'm putting in some medjo dates. So pitted medjo dates. I just, Soaked it a bit so that it's softer. Um, and let me see. And also, rendang always has coconut milk in it. Um, this time I'm just putting in some coconut flakes instead. Yeah, so let me see if I covered everything. So we have carrots, dates, mushrooms, sprouts, leek, chili, lemongrass, turmeric leaf. Oh, there's one more thing that makes it the um, that rendang. <laughs> flavor taste that you want which is called sand ginger i wasn't able to get it this time so i didn't put that in but if you can get it it's a small little tiny ginger but it doesn't taste like your i i guess like you know the common ginger it sometimes i find it hard to explain what asian flavors taste are because i can't find you know like a western equivalent to it but i put it in in malaysia we call it uh chakor in indonesia they call it kencho the scientific name is um camphira galangal yeah so okay we put in the coconut ginger juice soy sauce miso paste yokoji chili coriander curry cumin garlic ah i i ran out of garlic powder <laughs> obviously we need garlic as well so you know like onion, onion ginger garlic yeah so i ran out of that um so i didn't put that in uh, turmeric. Yeah, so those are all the ingredients. So now you just need to use your food processor. I'm gonna. Ooh, I didn't realize I had some water in. Let me just pour this up. <laughs> okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the carrot in first because, um, I find like because my food processor this is not very wide. I find that if I put everything in and process, it doesn't process properly. So it depends on how big your food processor is or how wide it is. This is actually a 2.2 liter. I don't know what is that in, um, yeah, in US equivalent, but anyway. I'm gonna process that. What is that powder that you showed? I've never seen, I saw that superfood powder. Sorry? When you showed that powder, you said it was a superfood. I've never heard about, Bob, what, what is that? I never heard of it. Okay, so this is baobab. I think it's the African uh, tree of light. Hold on, let me just check. Um, so the baobab tree is Africa's iconic tree of life. Native to the African savanna is the symbol of life and positivity in the landscape where little can thrive. So it's the fruit. It's the fruit of the baobab. It's um 
uh, I know it's high in vitamin C. Yeah, high in levels of vitamin C, antioxidants, calcium, magnesium, potassium, dietary fibers, and prebiotics. Uh, it tastes kind of sour. It's actually like a bit like tomato, actually, if you taste it. So I remember when um, COVID first hit a lot, uh, I remember one of my raw food chefs in Hong Kong, he was saying like, take baobab powder because it's very high in vitamin C. So, yeah. Interesting. So I, I put that in. But I think it's more for, yeah, a bit for the flavor as well because it's like tomatoey. So you give, you know, you get that um, umami flavor. Yeah. So, okay, my carrots are um, kind of crumbly now. So I'm going to put in the rest of the ingredients. Um, I'm going to put in all the, uh, you know, these spices, you know, the turmeric and the coriander and all that in first. Ooh, coriander. Yeah. I wonder if there are any um, Indonesian restaurants near, you know, where you live. I don't know if I've ever been to one. I don't even know if I've ever had Indonesian food. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's try it. I think because um because if you like Vietnamese food, I love Vietnamese um, food. My that's my favorite. Yeah, and if you like, and if you like Thai food, you know, um, I'm pretty sure you like Indonesian as well. Yeah, because we all share kind of like the same spices. You know, all the the cumin. It, it's just in different proportions and uh, maybe like yeah, different ways of cooking it. But you know, like the the ginger and the and the coriander and the turmeric and all that as well and the chili. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna put in the the chili, the lemongrass, the um yeah, so this is I, I cut the turmeric leaves this thing and just kind of put them in. Ooh, I haven't showed the lemongrass yet. So let me put this all in first and then I think I'll show you the lemongrass. It's funny, my food processor seems to be really full, but I made it the last time and and the same amount as well. So anyway. Yeah. So I remember um at one time my boyfriend was living in Berkeley, California, and um he used to and when I went in to visit him, we would go to this um Indonesian restaurant called Jaya Karta, and they had really good food. But I think they've closed already, so I can't even recommend for you to go there if you're ever there. But you're in Sacramento now, is it? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm in a, a suburb, but I'm I'm about thirty minutes from Sacramento. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, you know, next year I do plan to to. To travel to the US. So um maybe I can come for one of your meetups, Chef AJ. Oh man, that would be wonderful to meet you. <laughs> we can make you Indonesian food and Malaysian food. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm gonna put in the um this is the ginger juice and the soy sauce. And then I haven't added in the few koji So I'll add that in. It's just white. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, this year koji is not traditional, but um because we're making raw food, I wanted to add in a bit more layers of um umaminess into it. And even the miso is not traditional because um but the miso will also give it a lot of umami because we're not using um beef at all. So let me just put the miso in as well. Have you had a chance to check out any of the other offerings in the bundle? I have. So after I do this, I'll, I'll show you. Um, <laughs> we have a bit of show and tell. I have been making a lot of things. Um, uh, so I made Lisa's wrap and I made her tacos. Um, I also made some cooked food as well because my boyfriend eats cooked. So, um, oh, cheap lazy vegan, you know, uh, the Korean She's a Korean YouTuber. I made her Korean rice porridge. So that was really nice. Nice. Yeah.
Okay, let me just check on it. I need to stand because my kitchen space is not a lot. So. Okay, I'll just to scrape down a bit. So you just want to process it until it's kind of crumbly. Yeah. I need the um pumpkin pumpkin finish pumpkin hearty curry. Um I need some flax crackers. Oh I'll show you the flax crackers afterwards as well. Yeah. And then we made some salad, um made some raw granola. So we've got quite, quite a number of recipes, at least 10 from the bundle or That's more. Amazing. I, I print out a few, a few I wanted to try. I was going to make the, the carrot crumbles from Lissa's taco book, but I just downloaded your Indonesian book and it looks fabulous. <laughs> yeah, so my Indonesian book also has a mushroom rendang, but that one's even more involved. So um, yeah, but I really wanted to get that flavor. I, was in, I, I need to have that, you know, the one that I ate. Okay, I think we are good. Yeah. Yeah, super good. Because I'm going to put this in the wraps. I'm going to do like a mashup. So I'm I'm making Lisa's mahini wraps and then I'm going to put this into the wraps and then I'm going to make a sauce from the bundle. So yeah, if you guys can see the consistency now, so it's kind of like, kind of like minced meat, I suppose. You know? Yeah. Okay. So... Now, all we need to do... Oh, sorry. I forgot about the... I wanted to show you. Okay. Lemongrass. What you do is... um, If you get this fresh from your yeah, the Asian markets, we only have to use this portion here. Maybe like the first... The white... They usually call it the white portion. We don't use this part because it's too fibrous. And then... um, What I usually do is... People usually smash it. Because <laughs> you want to get the flavors out but um and you can use your knife to smash it i don't like to do that so i use i usually just take my empty jar and kind of bruise it i think that's the culinary term for it so you bruise it so the um flavors have come out oh i forgot something as well usually we peel off the the outer layer because you know that's the one that is kind of like black and not very clean, although I did wash this and this is, I think, organic, so yeah, anyway, and then I'm going to cut off this end here yeah, because we don't want that and then yeah, so you, you should just use this part, yeah oh, it's smelling good yeah, ooh alright <laughs> and then I just slice it yeah so I put one stalk and I didn't put in the other stalk, so let me just uh, so just slice it thinly. So traditionally they cook it, and they also use this in um Thai food as well, and uh, Vietnamese food as well, and Malaysian food as well. Yeah. Okay. So let me just process that in a bit. Okay, I think we're good. So now what we need to do is we're going to do the dehydration part. So let me get my dehydrator tray. I'm using an Excalibur dehydrator and I'm using the 9 tray Excalibur dehydrator. That's like, um, I used to have a small round dehydrator and then after that somebody wanted to sell me their pre-love dehydrator. I switched to that and love that and never look back. So we're going to put it on the non-stick sheet. I actually have the um, Excalibur Paraflex Ultra sheets, which is slightly more expensive than their usual Teflex sheets. But this, um, it's so good. It, it's like it's like your premium Teflex sheets and it works so well. So I really like it. So basically just, yeah, I may need to put this on two sheets. So I'm not going to put all of it on. Yeah, I'm just going to like put half of it, I think. And do the rest later. And spread it out. Just using a spatula, spread it out. 
Okay. That was good. Um, I'm not tasting it because I'm intermittent fasting, but um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it'll turn out good. Maybe later at 10 in the morning, I'll taste it and see if I need to. Uh -huh. Do you need it anymore? <laughs> yeah. So just basically spread it out on your dehydrator sheet and then put it into the dehydrator. Um, we dehydrate at 115 Fahrenheit. Uh, yeah, 115 Fahrenheit, uh, around 45 degrees Celsius. And um, usually what I do is I dehydrate about 90 minutes. After 90 minutes, what I do is I take the spatula or actually more of the spoon. I think the spoon's easier. And then I kind of mix it around as well, turn it around because what happens is the top will be dehydrated, but the underneath is not. So I mix it around to make sure that um, all the surfaces are dehydrated. And then I'll dehydrate for another like one to two hours. It depends on what consistency you're looking for. It can be um, uh, traditionally the Indonesian rendang is very dry. Malaysian rendang has a bit more sauce to it, saucy to it. But if you're doing Indonesia, it's actually very dry. Yeah, so it'll it'll come out like kind of like dry crumbles, I guess. You know, yeah. So um, yeah, that's how you make your Indonesian carrot rendang. Does anyone have any questions? Let me check. Not yet. Did anyone buy the bundle? Let us know. And if so, have you looked at Yin's course? Yeah. Have you, have you made Lissa's wraps often? Uh, I think I've made it at least like five, six times. Yeah. Yeah. What did you shoot? Yeah, I just made her mahini. Um, ma Last night, I made her mahini wrap that and then uh, oh, I wanted to show you yeah so I said I did uh, show and tell so I made her taco so I realized that I knew every single recipe in her raw vegan taco book and this is like the taco shell she has uh, now she has hard shell so I guess it's Tex-Mex it's not so Mexican but that's right so this is the red red one and then this is the corn one the yellow one and this is the green one yeah, and um, that goes with her, I made her low-fat carrot crumble, and I also made her um, salsa. Very easy salsa, just a classic tomato salsa. I mean, I tried all her salsas in the um, ebook. I like her pineapple. She has a pineapple and mango salsa. I really like that one. And then for the sauce, um... I usually make her sour cream and her nacho cheese sauce, but because I made that so many times previously, I thought I'll try another sauce instead. So I looked through the bundle. There are a lot of um, vegan cheese sauce recipes, actually, but I found one um, which is raw, so I made that. That's from veganrecipes.com, and they've contributed a, an ebook on 33, um, 33 awesome Thanksgiving recipes, I think, yeah. And um, I also made the cheese. Um, there's actually an ebook called Raw by the Art of Raw Food, and um, I remember previously they they actually had a raw vegan restaurant, but it's closed down already. So I made the pepper nut cheese. Um, so that's the cheese. Uh, I sub I use macadamia instead of cashew nuts. So, and then this is the flax crackers. Um, there's an ebook called I think Plants, Pills, and Punch lines by um Laurie Landry Wellness and she has um some flex crackers and she calls them fleckers. So I made that to go with the cheese. Um this was for Thanksgiving actually, yeah. Um yeah, so we had this, um it was very it was very popular with my boyfriend, but I'm gonna keep it because we're going hiking tomorrow with another friend. So we're gonna have some of this for our lunch tomorrow. Uh there's also a new plan planner app by Sarah I can't remember her full name but she goes by Better Food Guru and you get three months access to her meal plan app so for Thanksgiving I made her autumn kale salad that was really nice um, that had kale and arugula and pecans and um, an apple and she had a dressing which had um, mint and fresh mint and thyme and lemon juice and then I just made it oil free so I just substitute instead of olive oil I just put water and that worked well as well 
and we made Nate's um inside scoop one of the nice screens from his inside scoop books. Yeah, he has so many nice screens in there. And I made quite a number of that, so I really like that as well. So that that's what we had. We basically just like try out like three, four recipes from the bundle for Thanksgiving. Yeah. Oh, that cheese thing looks amazing. How did the carrot crumbles taste? It's good. Yeah, the carrot crumbles taste. Um, you know what? <laughs> the carrot crumbles has beet in it, it beetroot in it, and my boyfriend does not like it. And I never told him that there's beetroot, and he ate so much of the tacos. <laughs> you know, I actually have a taste test going up, so I think he's watching this now. So now he finally knows that beetroot in the carrot crumbles. And you know what, Chef AJ, I really like that. I was telling Lisa, I really like that carrot crumble because it's low fat. There's no seeds in it and there's no walnuts in it. There's no um, nuts. So you can eat a lot of it and not, you know, and not feel. Um, I know. That's going to be yeah. Yeah, so cool. Yeah. So, so yeah. Yeah, so um yeah, I've been so I've been having a lot of fun with the bundle. Oh, I actually have another offering as well. So I offered two courses this time in the bundle. Um I also have a Christmas showstoppers uh course. And I think the star of that course is um the beat Wellington, a raw vegan beat Wellington. Oh my and god, she made it. She made it. Yes. This Lisa showed made it. yeah. Yeah, Lisa made the beat Wellington for that. So yeah, and I've had people asking me whether I could just sell that recipe. They don't want to buy the course. I'm like, what's the bundle? And they're like, who just wants your Beat Wellington recipe? Wait, so 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 is the Beat Wellington in the bundle? Yes, it is. It's in the bundle. So I have a course called Christmas Showstoppers. Um, so I show you how to make the pastry. Um, so it's a, a couple of steps. That's the pastry. So that's the pastry. So that's the um yeah that that's the big Wellington. So there's a pastry and then there's a mushroom duck cell and there's a beet uh loaf. So you you make the 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 beetroot loaf first and then you make the mushroom duck cell. You wrap it and then after you have the pastry and then you wrap it all over. Um, I think that's how. Let me remember. Beet Wellington loaf, mush mushroom duck cell, and the beet Wellington. And then you assemble it and then you put it into the dehydrator. And um, yeah. So this is how it look like. Yeah. That so is beautiful. I, thank you. I know, like Nate and Lisa made it for their Thanksgiving yesterday. So, um, and I've seen pictures. So I'm really excited. I need to ask them how it tasted. I know she said that the pastry before she put it into the hydrator already tasted so good. So, I'm glad to hear that. So yeah. yeah, that's what we've been doing. You how how many hours a day do you spend in food prep? A lot. <laughs> Too many. Um, okay, so it depends. I mean, like yesterday was a super long busy day because yesterday I woke up and then I um I made um I tried oh I tried out the smoothie as well. So um Elena, Elena and Elena Minta, she has a a book on smoothies, but what's different is she is um highlighting different spices and herbs. So she uses like tonka beans or she uses cardamom. Or the one I, I made yesterday was a um uh was a, a something like pumpkin spice. So okay, so I'm making breakfast, I'm making lunch, I'm making dinner. Um how many hours? I mean, breakfast doesn't take that long. Breakfast is maybe like half an hour. But my lunch usually takes longer. Um, It takes me like maybe one, an hour to make my salad because I make a huge giant salad. So I tell Lisa, I don't know how she does it in 30 minutes because, you know, yeah. And then my dinner, I keep it very simple because dinner, I just eat fruit. So, you know, that's really fast. So I think it's the bulk of lunch. Um, I mean, when I'm not developing recipes, then... You know, um, I don't spend so much time. It's just that when I'm developing recipes, um, I'm making a lot. And then when I'm also like, you know, when making things from the bundle, then it takes longer. Yeah. So, so it does feel like yesterday felt like I was just in the kitchen forever. <laughs> but there, in the bundle, there is an ebook called I think Ten Minute Meals. 
by I think healthy vegan mama. So mm, let's try the curry recipe. So you know if if you guys are looking for quick ones, then you can do that. I think Jillian Berry has an ebook as well, like you know, very simple raw vegan recipes. Um and like I said, Alana, when she made her smoothie, she did a demo on my IG live yesterday. It was really fast, like, you know, within five five minutes, I think, her smoothie was ready because she just used, like, frozen blueberries, so you don't need to chop anything up. So it really depends on, um yeah, depends on the complexity of the recipes. Chris Kendall, Chris Kendall has um uh, his winter meal plan. And some of the recipes there are very simple as well. So, like, the other day when I was busy, I just made, like, his, one of his romaine, one of his smoothies for lunch. And it was, like, it's basically romaine, lettuce, and banana. So, that was, that was quick. Yeah. Yep. Yum. So, how do you eat this uh, dish? Ah, okay. So, traditionally, the rendang is actually eaten with rice. So, you can make cauliflower rice or hikama rice. You eat that. Um, okay, so in Asia, we don't like have a main dish. So we usually have basically you have rice as the staple, and then you have your different side dishes. So you have a curry, you have a you know, you have maybe a pickle, you have a bit of salad, or like you just have different dishes. That's why in my ebook, I, I have the different components to it. So you can make a rice, and then you can make you know, eat the rendang, and then you have it with some um the the acha that I have the acha katimun, which is like a pickled dish, and then um yeah, but um for this one, like I said, I wanted to actually use it as a wrap filling, yeah, because you know um Lisa's hand salad ebook is in there, so I'm going to I'm going to um I made her martini wrap, so I'm going to use that wrap, and then. Uh, fill that with lettuce and then fill it with this and then I'm going to make a sauce Um, I know Jillian Berry has like I said she has come up with a brand new ebook on like 100 plus raw vegan recipes I saw like she had a, a orange I think it's like a tangy orange sauce or dressing so I'm going to make that and put it with this as well so it's a mashup but yeah traditionally it's usually just eaten with rice and veggies and your side dishes and oh the sambal as well so I have like um, the sambal is like a um, I guess it's like a condiment or it's like a relish, yeah, a chili like relish. So I'm using that. Yeah, I mean I have that in my ebook, so you can in my course, so you can make that as well. So my course actually has videos as well, so you have video instructions on exactly how to make it. Because sometimes I see like people have ebooks, they're like, you know, they're still trying to figure out like how how do you do this. You're trying to visualize the steps. So the course actually has um step by step videos. So you know exactly how to make it because some people might not be familiar with um the Asian food. Yeah. That's a great idea to include videos with the recipes. Yeah, I yeah. love it. And so if people don't have a dehydrator, is there any way to make this dish? Um okay, if you don't want to make it raw, okay, traditionally this dish is actually um cooked in a pot. Uh, I think you can make this and bake it, I suppose. It would be interesting. I think it would be interesting if you bake it and see how it is. Okay, so people usually say you can use the oven, put it on a low heat, you know, leave your dehydrator door open. I don't know, you leave your oven door open. But because this is going to take like 90 minutes and another like, you know, it's going to take like maybe three and a half hours. I mean, practically speaking, I think if you put it in an oven at low heat at three and a half hours it's gonna be like it, it just uses a lot of gas i suppose and also um it might make your kitchen very hot but if you don't want it to be raw you can try and bake it and see how it turns out i don't i don't do much baking anymore yeah i mean yeah i don't really bake when i when i cook my food for my boyfriend it's usually just steaming or boiling yeah but i'm pretty sure you can make this yeah well, that's neat. Well, thank you so much. Uh, this is such, you 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 have such creativity in your recipes. Oh, you're most welcome. Yeah, it's really fun to watch you make things because they're so unique, you know. And you make <laughs> food from all different cultures that people maybe don't eat a lot of. Yeah, that's why I wanted to introduce it because I'm, I I think I'm just a bit because I discovered raw food in 2014. So I think I'm. It's like you know I'm so used to seeing like. Zulu's marinara or you know like you know raw vegan brownies and I'm like we want to do 
more interesting stuff apart from that, you know. I know you're really making it an international cuisine, you know. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 the the raw food techniques can be applied to um this kind of cuisine as well. Did you ever think you'd I mean, want to? Do you ever think you'd want to work in a a raw restaurant or open your own? Um, no, because um, I've done some pop up dinners. I used to do some private dining experiences previously, and I have also uh teamed up with another uh vegan chef to do some pop up dinners, both in KL and in Hong Kong. And um, the ones in Hong Kong was very well received. The ones in Malaysia, not well. The the last one I did was sold out, but I still had to kind of like beg people to come. So um. No, I don't think so. Just because it feels like it's just too much work, and I don't think I have the patience to run the restaurant. I know. It's, you know? It, I know what you mean. I know what you yeah. mean. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you guys want the recipe, you can just look below in the show notes. It's also the link if you'd like to get the bundle from Yin and any of her other courses. Yay! I hope people make it. If you guys make it, please leave it. Yeah, yeah. Leave something in the comments to let us know how how it went. Whether yeah. you enjoyed it. Well, great. Well, thank you so much, Ian. You're most welcome, Chef AJ. All right. And thanks everyone for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. That's it today. Four shows is enough. Six in a day is my record, but we'll be back tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific time, Pacific, Pacific time with another bundle participant. We have plentiful Kiki, and she's also going to be talking about the bundle and telling you how you can eat carbs and not worry about your weight. Have a great day, Ian. Your day is just starting. Thanks, Jeff AJ. Thanks, everyone. All right. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.